Hey guys, Dave here. If you've got a Shaper Origin and are anything like me, you always hate having to fork over one of these for four of these. So the cost of this stuff is not exactly a deal breaker, but it is nice to save some when we get a chance. I don't really think about the cost that much when I'm in the middle of a project, but when I can, I like to use a reusable tape board. Most of you have probably already made a reusable tape board, but the problem I've always had was trying to shim these things up, find scraps of plywood the right thickness to get it exactly the right height so it matches the thickness of whatever workpiece I'm working on. So I built this to try to solve that problem. And it's a simple adjustment by turning this board here and the tape board itself stays dead flat and I can just adjust it till it's perfect with my workpiece. I'm going to show you how I made this. The concept for this mechanism is pretty simple. Turning the cap bolt in the top center of the board rotates the center gear, which then rotates the two largest gears and they rotate the eight small gears around the perimeter. The small gears have fixed bolts which are installed into threaded inserts in the board, so act as adjustable feet that raise and lower the tape board. Here I'm setting up Origin to cut one of the gears. The tape board you see me using is the first one I made a few years ago. I had originally planned to make two of them, and I'm finally getting around to the second one. The upside is I get to show it to you in use on a real project. I used 3 quarter inch pre-finished plywood for the board and all the gears because the finish is pretty durable and it minimizes the friction between all of the surfaces. The biggest challenge I had on this project was designing the gears. I actually was a mechanical engineer in a former life and vaguely remember having a class that covered gear design, but well, let's just say that was a long time ago. So I took to the internet and found a great article that covered the basics of spur gear design. I'll put a link to it below. The second half of the article was about the gear tool in Inkscape and a tutorial on using it. I already had Inkscape because, well, it's free, and I use it to convert my CAD files to SVGs to use with Origin. Who knew I could use it to design gears too? Cool. I added these spoke cutouts in the gear hub to reduce the weight a little but really they're pretty trivial. I think they look cool though, so I'm glad I did it. Now I'm getting the tape board ready for milling its bottom. I'll make sure to mill all of the holes that locate the gears from the same side. That'll keep them the most accurately positioned in relation to each other. As I mentioned before, I had always planned to make two of these, so I had already cut this board out back when I made the first one, and it's been hanging on the wall, patiently waiting for its turn ever since. I did need to add another strip of shaper tape near its top edge to be able to mill the small gear holes down near the bottom. So I'm not really going to go into actual dimensions and design much in this video. But if you want to make one of these, the cut files will be available along with a hardware list on Shaper Hub, and I'll put a link to that in the description. I will show you the assembly in some detail though, so if you want to skip to that, check the chapter links below. The board's bottom side is done now, and I can flip it over to mill the top. I'm leaving a gap between it and the first tape board so I can use its top edge to reestablish the same x-axis I used for the bottom. As you can see, it already has shaper tape on it from when I used it to mill the first one a few years ago. All I need to cut on this side is a bunch of counter bores and an Allen key holder. I don't know, it seems like in every video I do, there's a point where I have to stop to make some sort of confession. And, well, that's where we are now. 
and I guess what I'm confessing is pretty self-evident. I did cut all the gears for my first tape board using Origin, and also the first gear I showed you earlier in this video. But I really didn't feel like cutting out 10 more gears that way, and I specifically bought this little benchtop CNC to make that sort of thing a lot easier. Now don't get me wrong, I love my Shaper Origin and accessories, and they're often still the best tools for a given job. But with a CNC router available, the Origin just wasn't the best choice this time. So I'm hoping you Shaper fans will forgive me. I've just finished cutting the counter bores for one side of the eight small gears and I'm flipping the piece over to do the other sides. I want to do the hex inserts, through holes, and gear profiles all from the same side because they need to be the most precise in relation to each other. I'm sure somebody is going to want to know how much the board height changes with each turn of the Allen key. And my answer to that is, I don't even have a clue. I know the bolts I used in the small gears have 18 TPI, but I don't remember how many teeth there are on the gears and don't really have much interest in counting them. All I really need to know is that the board has a little less than three quarters of an inch of travel. So as long as I start within that distance, I can adjust it until it's flush with my workpiece. I finally have all of my parts made and hardware collected and I'm just about ready to assemble. Just about. I needed an inch and an eighth long cap bolt for the center gear but could only find them in quarter inch increments. For some reason I got an inch and a half long bolt but whatever I need to cut it down. All right. The first assembly step is to install the threaded inserts into the tape board. I put a couple of spacers under the board first because the inserts will stick out a bit proud of the board's bottom. The threads in the inserts don't start until nearly a quarter inch down from their top, but they're threaded all the way through after that. So installing them from the top of the board assures that there are threads all the way to the bottom side of the board and that'll give me the maximum amount of board height adjustment. I'm using some epoxy for a couple of things. I'll do them next so they'll be dry in the morning. First is the magnets that will hold the Allen key in place. Then the hex bolts into the eight small gears. Next, the T-nut goes into the center gear. After drying overnight, I can clean the excess epoxy off the bottoms of the gears and install them in the bottom of the tape board. I'll screw them in until they just contact the board. Now, the large outer gears can go into place. The one on the left seems to be sticking a little and I notice that some of the small gears haven't seated flat against the bottom of the tape board. Apparently I didn't get the threaded inserts put in perfectly square to the board, so I need to do a little adjusting. Looks like that worked and everything turns smoothly now. I should probably come back and put a couple drops of epoxy around these inserts. Maybe later. Or maybe not. At any rate, I can go ahead and screw these into place now. I'm just using a couple of sheet metal screws here because it's simple. I'm leaving them just loose enough so the gears can turn freely. I made the pilot holes in the bottom of the board fairly snug to somewhat lock the screws in place, and that's why the wood is lifting where they go in. I'll just trim that back down so the gears can stay flat against the board. 
And now, finally, the center gear can go in. Except that that cap bolt is still a little too long. Dang it. Oh well, at least there's an easy fix for being a little too long. Okay, that's better. The idea with this center gear assembly is that the gear is sandwiched tight between the T-nut I installed earlier on its top and the hex nut I just installed from the bottom. So I started by inserting the cap bolt through the tape board and threading it into the gear's T-nut, leaving it loose enough so that the gear could still turn freely. Then the hex nut on the bottom gets tightened against the gear to act as a jam nut. It takes a couple of loosenings and retightenings to get it just right. Well, that's pretty much it. My only other thoughts on making this are regarding the gear tolerances. As I'm showing you here, there's almost no backlash between the center and outer gears, and only a little between the outer and smallest gears. Since gear backlash wouldn't affect the function of this thing at all, but the gears being too tight would, I could have designed these a bit looser. So if I were going to make another board, I think I would scale the center gear down by maybe 15 or 20 thousandths. So again, if you want to make one of these, the files are freely available on ShaperHub, and I'll put a link below. And don't forget to come back and let me know how yours came out. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know by liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. As always, thanks so much for watching. Cheers.